So we're down here in uh, stage one of the process, and uh, you've actually got five processes that you stages that you actually go. That's correct. So this is a 2,500 horsepower boiler right here. Uh, pretty good sized boiler. <laughs> yes, right? it's a big one. Yeah. But uh, Orrin, why don't you just take us to the process of stage one? What actually happens here? Stage one is where we actually will begin this this process of incorporating tube sheets, turnaround, uh, furnace welding in all the stay rods, welding all the connections to the boiler, mm -hmm. making it the major welding process is being done in that stage one to create that pressure vessel. Okay. So now as far as putting the stay rods in, uh, what, what actually does a stay rod do? Stay rod anytime by ASME code section one, any void area that doesn't have already an anchor such mm -hmm. as a tube, mm -hmm. a tube joint, that bare space needs to have uh, another anchoring point to make sure there's no implosion to that area okay. that is void of any kind of, a, of an anchor okay. in that, on that tube So you're sheet. basically trying to keep that tube sheet from warping That's is what correct. you're doing. Okay. And, and with the buildup of pressure internally, with, uh -huh. with water being on the outside of the tubes and, and have a large capacity there, you've got a very large area that has to be, in a, in, when it's in a flat, that's the critical part of a stay ride, making sure that flat area that doesn't have an anchor is secured. Right. So I noticed on the on this particular one, you've got the, the, the front tube sheet, the rear tube sheet is not in, yet, not in yet, but there is something in the middle there. What is that? When we get boilers that start to exceed 20 feet from inside tube sheet to tube sheet, mm -hmm. we like to have what we call an intermediate tube sheet. Okay. This just gives the additional support for the weight of that tube you know, with mm. that long distance. So just making sure we have no droop with that tube yeah. on, a, on a length that long. Yeah, definitely don't want any sagging. It's, it's, a, it's not a pressure requirement. It doesn't require the thicknesses like we do on our main tube sheet. Uh -huh. So you can get by with a thinner wall, half inch, nine sixteenths, whatever you want to use, because it's strictly just a, an area for the tube to rest. Okay. So, so when we're talking about the tube sheet, um, I guess number one, this thing is thick. What are we what are we looking at here? This is a seven eighths material for okay. this tube sheet. Awesome. And as far as the the tubes themselves, they actually go in these holes, but I'm noticing that you have some type of a groove in here. The, it, we call that a serration. This has really been established more from the industrial boiler world mm -hmm. in water tube designs. That's kind of a standard practice. We wanted to make sure that besides bringing on a, a well above ASME code section one material wall thickness for the tube sheet. Uh -huh. With ours, our minimum is three quarter to seven eighths usually, but with this serration, it just adds an additional way when we roll that tube in that process, part of that outside wall goes into this very, it's just a 1 16th by 1 16th dip, uh -huh. a deep uh, serration in that tube hole. And what that does, it creates an additional strength in the tube pull process. So okay. imagine this boiler, when it's firing, it's got to grow, grow horizontally. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of pull going on with those tubes to that tube sheet. This allowed an additional 41% additional strength to that tube pull, tube pull, uh, pull process. Right. So all that said, it just gives you a very durable uh, joint for the tube to the tube sheet for that because it's really your heart and soul of sure. a fire tube boiler. Sure. If this isn't designed correctly, that's where you get into issues sure. with cycling conditions, uh, things like that that can cause that stress to that, to that tube area. So um, last thing on the tube sheet here, we got a pretty good sized hole here and I'm, this is where the Morrison tube of course is going to be uh, put on. Now this is done in the stage two. Is that one? Yeah, no, Morrison actually, two? this will you happen have in stage it here? one okay. too. Okay. Because okay. with this process, we have to get the initial tube sheet set, aligned, gotcha. properly set up, and get the stays in. Because once you put that hole, we're, we'll actually build the rear and that turnaround section and furnace all will be as a unit. Okay. That'll slide in from the from the rear of the boiler to where we then get that alignment correct because you don't want to have these tube sheets off. Right, right. <laughs> then, then you have then you those concerns with, you know, getting that aligned and getting them to seat. One thing I noticed um, is why is this at an angle? 
you've got a 28 degree bevel typically both on your your furnace area and also on the tube sheet uh -huh. this allows the the proper amount of passes and weld width okay based on pressure as well as the thickness of that material there's a code requirement about how much well will need to be put into place to properly secure that okay uh, furnace and tube sheet to the shell now is there some inspection stuff that's going on while all of this is happening then? we have a very strict ITP that's being followed so there are hold points inspection points throughout this process with travelers what we call travelers mm -hmm. that is a form that both our, our welders are certified welders that are set up to do this process along with our inside quality control uh, personnel and our third-party Hartford insurance inspector that will all have to review, <laughs> inspect, sign off before any the next process will move forward. Yeah, pretty important to have all that stuff. I mean, just from the standpoint, I mean, these things obviously are uh, could be very dangerous if not built well. Absolutely, you 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 can't you can't skip a pass or anything like that to try to get this thing through the system. Yes, no. There's, there's too many checkpoints to make sure by code that we have to follow and inspect. Awesome. So, okay. Durable. Well, let's move on to stage two.